This is the first progress report on uh, Merlin 55415. I wanted to do a little bit more filming, but unfortunately we've just been too busy. Um, so we're quite a way on with it now. It looks more like a Daimler Benz at the moment, upside down on the uh, um, turning stand. We've got the crank and the rods in. We've done as little as possible in terms of cleaning on the engine. Um, we just want to keep it as original as possible. That said, we've had to have the oil plugs out of the crankshaft in order to clear the sludge out of it, so the whole thing's been apart. And um, it all looks in really good condition. This is of course a new crankcase, because the original crankcase had this reduction gear section broken off it. So the crankcase, the front casing, are replacements. The prop shaft is as well. But the small gear, which you can't see now, the pinion, the bottom is original as are all the bearings which are on it. Here's the sump and again lower crankcase actually. Again this is a replacement part because all that was left on the engine was just the flange um, and in fact this is off um, a 60 series Spitfire Merlin and it's had to be repaired as well as many of the bits on this engine because they had a big hole in it. And if you look on the website at the photos, you'll see some of the work we've done on it. And um, the other major component that needed a fair bit of welding was the wheel case here on the engine, which drives all the um, accessories and the camshafts and so on and so forth, and drives through to the supercharger at the back. This has had a fair bit of welding done on it. And the camshafts have had to come completely to bits because although they turned um, they were quite tight obviously just due to sitting for so long so all the individual rocker arms and so on have been taken off um, there's just over 400 parts in each of these two cam assemblies so it takes a while another interesting feature on this particular engine is that we've machined the piston skirts off that is originally about another inch or so on the bottom of the piston, which is the top in this picture, um, which these early engines had. Um, they found in service that some of these skirts were breaking um, and coming away inside the engine, and they actually deleted this as a feature, and later pistons um, don't have the skirt. Um, somebody previously dismantling this engine has um, managed to break a lot of the skirts um, by the action of the conrods pushing against them. I've just rested this one back on top of the piston here. Um, and so we decided to machine them off in order to keep the original pistons in the engine. We could have replaced them. Um, and so this has left us with only a single oil control ring on the engine and three compression rings. Now, um, there were certainly no piston rings below the gudgeon pin on some of the later Meteor engines with the 7 to 1 compression ratio. Um, and also the Griffin only uses a single oil control ring. So using those two factors we're going for the fact that it'll run OK as a ground runner with just those rings on it and it'll be interesting to see what actually happens um, with it. And there's the new upside down data plate on the engine because this particular one was missing. The sister engine to this which we have here still has the plate on it luckily.